we want to guys by the place. Uh, we want to see in more detail how Google sells the ad space uh, and what the alternative is going to be. eBay uh, works. Uh, so the seller uh, proposes a, announces a start price. <coughs> and in order to kind of make uh, the auction as appealing to as many people as possible, usually this start price is unrealistically low. So, uh, so, so he also has uh, a reserve uh, price, which is the price that uh, the bids have to reach in order to be actually sold. Uh, if no bid uh, reaches the reserve price, uh, the seller doesn't have to sell the item, right? But uh, the start price is uh, always announced publicly, right? And uh, very often start price is actually the reserve <coughs> uh, price, but it doesn't uh, have to be so. Okay. Uh, so eBay uh, mandates uh, the minimal uh, offer increase. Uh, let's call it delta. So if the old Asking price is P, uh, then uh, any new asking, uh, any new uh, offer uh, has to be uh, bigger or equal than P plus delta. So who is the winner of the auction? Uh, is the uh, customer with the, the highest bid? But uh, how much is he charged for the item? Uh, uh, only the mean of uh, uh, second highest bit plus delta and uh, highest bit. Right, so this is the second price auction mechanism in which you don't get charged your bid if your bid is the winning one, the highest one. 
but you get charged the second highest bid plus this minimal um, of an increase delta. And of course, um, automated uh, proxies, um, you give them Uh, the highest priced uh, you are willing to be and then the, um, the, uh, the proxy does the bidding for you the, this automated system now here we said that, <coughs> that new asking uh, new offer has to be asking price plus uh, p. What is the asking price? Uh, which is made uh, public. That's the uh, second highest bid. Uh, So what you see on this page is not the highest bid. You cannot see the highest bid, but you see the second highest bid, right? which is the amount. So this asking price plus delta will be uh, what the winner, if he wins the auction, will have to pay. So this is uh, uh, what you see. OK, so now let's see. Why, uh, why the auction functions in this way? Why the winner is not charged at his highest bid, but is actually charged the second highest bid? Uh, yes. Uh, good question. Uh, if the second high, so look at the old asking price having to be P, and the new asking price being red or equal to P plus delta. Sorry, sorry. Can you? Uh, I cannot um, hear you. So on the right here you wrote that if the old, if the old asking price is P, mm -hmm. P asking price is red there or equal to P plus delta. Mm -hmm. So if you're taking the min between the old bid, uh, let's say the old bid, the second highest bid is P, then the first highest bid has to be red or equal to P plus delta. So then would that just be the min of P plus delta or a number greater than or equal to P plus delta? So it is the uh, minimum, so it is the minimum of the Second, so essentially you are charged second highest bid plus this delta unless uh, this is larger, uh, which is not very likely, right? Larger than the highest bid, in which case uh, uh, you are charged the highest bid. But isn't that impossible if the highest bid has to be at least delta more than, like, yeah. Because if the bids are increasing by size delta... No, no, they are not increasing by size by delta. At least size delta. At least size delta. Yeah, so, so the highest bid presumably came sometime after the second highest bid, right? Which means... Uh, yes, yes, yes. So, so uh, that's true. So it is actually, I don't know why in the book I didn't think about that, but you are right. The highest bid, uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, must be... Uh, cannot be larger than that, so we can just say it gets charged the second highest bid the plus delta. Very good observation. Wait, but what if there's only two people that that uh, bid mm -hmm. for the item, and the first one is the minimal, and uh, the actual winning one is like one. Wait, oh, you still get Oh, I suppose the, 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 the edge case is if only one person bids on the item. If only one person bids, then there isn't a second item. Ah, that's true. That's what changes. So, okay, let me put it back. So that's the edge case. So, so it is mean of second highest bid and uh, highest uh, bid. Uh, and this gets activated only in case there is uh, only one bidder. Okay, very good. Huh? 
Okay, very good. I didn't say that. Uh, the, you are uh, all the auctions are given uh, the window uh, in which they have to terminate. Uh, so, for example, you know that uh, within exactly seven days of the start of the bidding, uh, the bid terminates, and whoever is the highest is the winner. Uh, so the time is limited. Uh, very good. Uh, so the bidding stops uh, when uh, the, um, uh, the time expo for that auction expires. Uh, Alex, is, yes. is asking price the price they show on like, Yes, page. yes. So asking price is what you see. So what if the, the actual highest bid is much higher than the second highest bid, then anyone who wants to bid for the item won't know what's the actual highest bid? Okay, so the question is, uh, in this second highest bid, uh, um, why is it not the case that uh, you're then motivated to put some unrealistically high bid because you know that you will be charged only the second highest bid. But you see, if you can think that way, everyone else can think that way. So if you go with very high bid, maybe other people, you run the risk that other people also went with very high bid, and so you won, but you have to pay unreasonably high price. Right, so there is an incentive not to do that. And what we want to now show that in fact uh, this uh, auction mechanism motivates uh, the, uh, the bidders to evaluate uh, uh, the items objectively, how, how much the item is worth for that. But, so, um, let us look at that now. So, um, so uh, proposition um, you cannot uh, uh, let's see how shall we how shall we formulate this? Uh, so, so you are incentivized to be the truthfully. i.e. Uh, the objective uh, value to you, right, uh, of the object. Uh, so let us uh, prove that. So assume opposite. So assume you bid some amount B uh, that is bigger than the value so uh, of, of your object. Uh, when can this make uh, when can this make a difference? Right? Uh, only if you would have lost the auction uh, if you bid B, right? 
So the only, was because right you have charged the second highest bit, right? So if you beat the board, then the value of your object, it has no impact on what the second highest uh, bit was. So it will not make a difference how much you will have to pay. The only difference that it can make is that otherwise you would lose the auction. But uh, would have lost if you beat V. Uh, but this means uh, that the second of offer is uh, bigger than V, right? Because that's the only way when you, how you would have lost if you offered only V, right? Uh, but then, say second offer, let's call it F2, is bigger than V. But then you pay uh, you pay F2, which is bigger than the value of your value of the object for yourself. So even though you won on the auction, you are at a loss because you will pay more than what the value of the object for you is. So this is the first assumption. Uh, let's try uh, the other direction. So assume, so that's contradiction. Assume uh, you bid uh, B, which is smaller than the value of the, right? So in the first case, this is the value of the object for you. You bid here a bit B that is larger than V. This will make a difference, right? If everyone else is bidding below V, it wouldn't make difference. You might as well bid V. So the only difference can be made if the second uh, offered uh, um, price is larger than the value. Right, because in this case you would have lost if you beat only V. But then you will pay this value, second highest value, which is larger than the value, so you are at a loss. Now assume that you beat that you beat smaller than uh, V. So here is V and you beat some smaller value B. Right? Um, so for this, uh, to make a difference, uh, someone must have been between B and V, because again, if, uh, if, uh, everyone was bidding below B, even if you bid V, you would uh, have to pay exactly the same price. So the only option is that the second bid, uh, uh, second uh, offer must be uh, bigger than B. Uh, sorry, bigger than B. But if that happens, then you have to run the option. That's exactly right. But in that case, you lose the option. And again, you are not better off. So thus, Uh, no bit different than your true valuation 
uh, puts you in better position. I the expected payout can be only smaller because you either overpay in the first case or uh, you uh, lose the auction while well, you could have won it uh, if the second bid was indeed between B and B. Okay, so this is the reason why uh, the second asking price is uh, winner paying second asking price is uh, so popular because it uh, stimulates you to bid uh, precisely what um, your true value of the item, what the value of the item to, to you is, uh, <coughs> right? But notice here, the situation that we consider is when several bidders bid for only one item. Now, what does, uh, however, in Google case, uh, uh, you have a web page that is uh, search results. And the, the first few items that you see are not the ones proposed by Google, but are the items that uh, are essentially ads, right? So uh, these are the spaces uh, in which you can place your ad. And experience shows uh, that the number of clicks that each place gets decreases for the places that are in this direction, that are uh, lower down on the search results. So, and Google uh, keeps track of statistics of uh, how many clicks per hour each of the places generate. So, so uh, Google keeps track how many clicks. How do you spell clicks? Like this, is it? This is when you rely on uh, you know, a software to correct your spelling, then you stop paying attention to how you spell things. Google keeps track of how many clicks per, per hour each space is uh, generating. Right? So, uh, bidders bid for all of these spaces, uh, right? So there are multiple items that can be won, but Google still maintains, so to speak, generalized second highest bid. Uh, so um, advertisers um, uh, with the uh, highest uh, bid uh, per click wins, but uh, wins uh, the first, the highest space uh, uh, wins uh, uh, space one, so this is space one, this is space two, space three. Sometimes usually you have three or four like this or something, even more. So advertiser with the highest bid per click wins. Space one 
but is charged at the price equal the second highest bid, uh, then uh, second highest bidder uh, wins spot two, but is charged Uh, the third uh, highest bit and so forth for as many spaces uh, you have uh, so it's uh, charged the third space and uh, assuming that uh, there are only three bitters so if uh, there are only three bidders, then a third bidder gets charged uh, some uh, predefined minimum. Right, because we don't have, the third cannot get the fourth highest bid because there are only four bidders. So number one will pay the bid uh, B2. Uh, uh, so uh, one pays uh, B2, two pays B3, and then three pays uh, minimum uh, by Google. So this is a different situation than here, right? Because now there are several items. Above, we had uh, uh, several bidders, but only one item. Now we have several items, and uh, lo and behold, this changes rules of the game, because uh, this setup no longer stimulates people to bid uh, truthfully. And that's what we want to illustrate why this is so. So when you have a multiple um, multiple items uh, going on in the same auction, then the generalized second price does not guarantee truthful bidding. And we want to improve this. First, we want to see that this is indeed the case. And uh, um, then uh, see how this can be improved. OK. So let us give an example. So example that uh, generalized uh, second highest is not immune uh, to manipulation. So assume that we have uh, uh, three bidders, A, B, and C, and two add spaces. 
um, say um, S1 and S2. And assume now that um, uh, S1 has 400 click per hour. Uh, S2 has 300 per hour. Okay. Now assume um, the value uh, for A is $12 per click. This means that on average, each click generated $12 profit. What does it mean? Well, of course, some of the clicks, or probably majority of clicks, do not generate any revenue, but uh, some of the clicks might uh, generate, if you are selling more expensive items, uh, much more than $12, maybe the revenue, the profit that you make is $120, and only 10 clicks provides uh, one sale with $120 profit. So on average, you would have a profit of $12 per click. Uh, the value for B is $8 per click. Uh, and for C is uh, uh, $4 per click. So let's consider uh, scenario one. All bidders bid truthfully. What will be the result of the auction? Well, if all bidders bid truthfully, so let's draw a picture. So here are our <coughs> bidders uh, uh, A, B, and C, and the values are 12, uh, 8, and uh, $4 per click. And there are two odd spaces. One has 400 uh, clicks per hour, and the other has 300 clicks per hour, right? In this case, uh, A will win the first place, because he bids 12. B will win the second space, and C doesn't get advertising space. Let's now see how much money uh, they make and how much money Google makes. Uh, right? Well, um, let's compute profit for A. Uh, he gets um, $12 per click at a rate 400 per hour which is uh, um, well uh, minus his expenses. So he will gain $12 of profit times 400 clicks, but will be charged $8. So 8 times 400, which is uh, 1,600 profit. Right, because this is the revenue and this is the cost of advertising.
right? Uh, and let's keep on the side track how much Google makes out of the whole thing. So Google gets uh, eight times four hundred dollars. So that's uh, uh, thirty-two hundred dollars for Google. Is it tough? eight times? What is like this, right? Okay, profit for B. Um, so he gets uh, how much? Eight dollars times three hundred minus his cost is uh, uh, four dollars times three hundred, <coughs> which is. Uh, uh, $1,200 profit. And Google gets also $1,200, which make, makes it $4,400 for Google. And uh, the two sellers get together, what is this, 1600 and 1200 Zero zero eight three thousand eight hundred. So notice, is that correct? Is that my calculation correct? Let's see. Profit for A is twelve times four minus the advertising cost, which is eight times four. Right. So this is. Uh, this should be two thousand eight hundred. Sorry. When you add them, you get two thousand eight hundred, not three thousand eight hundred. Uh, when I, oh, 2,800, oh, even worse. So P gets eight times 300 per hour minus four times 300 is four times 1,200. So the sellers make a total profit of 2,800 and Google pockets uh, uh, almost twice as much. So now you can see why Google is so bloody uh, rich, right? So except like if if you had a system where you instead of getting the second highest bidder. You